Today's video is sponsored by Bissell.com. I know you're stuck inside, house is getting dirty. It's spring, so why not do some spring cleaning? You can get 30% off all cleaning formulas at Bissell.com by clicking the link down in the description and entering in BOGO30 at checkout. It's a great time to do it. What else are you gonna do? In the meantime, stick around. We've got a great video for you. And uh, yeah, let's go. Hey, what's up, Room Sixers? Didn't see you there. Uh, as you can see, I'm just getting Room Six spruced up for Easter, or Ostara, or Zombie Jesus, or whatever it is that you uh, you celebrate. But uh, in the meantime, stick around. This is going to be a weird one today. Uh, doing an interview via remote for the first time. I've gone remote, but thanks to COVID-19, uh, yeah, I'm staying inside, and so is the uh, band I'm interviewing today, and so should you. Wash your freaking hands and follow the rules. Unless you absolutely have to go out, definitely don't do it. And when you do go out, come back and decontaminate. It's really important. This is super serious, guys. So, um, yeah. In the meantime, thanks for coming by and uh, hang out. This is going to be an interesting one. Italy is fantastic. It's, uh, it's... It's up there. It's uh, among my favorite places. The people there are so welcoming and the venues are really cool and uh, they're very welcoming when you come to town. Interesting place, for sure. I love yeah. it. Other than that, I mean, the, the, the invites to the sex party were pretty interesting. That, that what? If you're enjoying the content Room 6 is putting up, please make sure you subscribe down there and hit the bell so you don't miss an episode. While you're at it, feel free to like and share. And uh, yeah, let's go. Hi. Hello. Hi. Hola. Hello. Uh, wait, wait, wait. Something's not right. There we go. Hey. hey. <laughs> Happy... Easter Ostara Zombie Jesus Day, which is tomorrow at the time this uh, interview comes out. And uh, let's do this proper. Welcome to Room 6, the channel dedicated to the local Las Vegas music scene and the people that make it, including me. I'm Josh, and today I'm coming to you quarantined from Room 6, talking to a lovely band named Stanley Avenue, who is also quarantined, as they should be. And um, once again, I'm going to say, wash your damn hands. Anyway. Other than that, how are you guys doing? Doing good. Yeah, I think we're great. It's another day in paradise, right? Yeah, right we're not on. exactly like Easter, so I wore a lime green shirt. Yes, well. Now, uh, did you do anything at all in terms of like Easter egg hunts or anything like that? Or no, I'm sorry, it's going to be tomorrow when this comes out. Time travel is weird. Yeah. Let me come back down here. There we go. Cool. So, officially... Welcome to Room 6, guys, and um, we've been trying to get you on for a while, trying to get this done for a while, so <laughs> thank you very much. Uh, for those of you that don't know, if you're watching this video and you have no idea who Stanley Avenue is, first of all, thank you. Second of all, they are an amazing band that's uh, been mostly doing covers around town, but they're actually working on their original stuff, and they're going to grace us with some of it today uh, after this interview. And uh, I'm very fortunate to know their drummer from number of things uh the drummer billy who unfortunately couldn't be bothered to sh i mean i mean he uh couldn't uh, show up today <laughs> billy actually was uh one of the drummers for my original indie rock band the suspense i don't know if well you know that i think and also he's in uh so stoked who's been on this channel he's been in he's in well lit and i interviewed Corey brown the front man for that band so um i just thought it was appropriate let's get all of his a acts that he's in on the channel why not and unfortunately, he can't be here today. Um, coronavirus is real, and it's it's making everything a little bit hectic. But that's cool. We at least got the core of the band. Yes. And yes. We miss, you. miss you, dude. <laughs> yeah, we miss you, Billy, and and representing. And uh, yes, and 
if you happen to catch the Void Vader interview that I, uh, where I interviewed the band at the uh, green room of the bunkhouse, bing, which was, this was literally like right before they said, stay indoors. So it was like the last night where people were like shake, you know, shaking hands and hugging and stuff. <laughs> um, I was, I, I was rocking this shirt. So represent. All right, moving on real quick before anything else. Um, how are you guys ham? How, how is the whole quarantine thing affecting your life as, as a band and just individually? That's a good question. Uh, as a band, it hit us pretty hard. Um, I've never uh, seen that much money disappear in that short amount of time ever in my life. Uh, oh, you, you so mean in terms of shows, like, like money yeah. that you would have made, yeah. Sure, yeah. Um, so yeah, we, it, it hit us hard financially, but we're, I think we're, we're keeping it on, keeping it. we're writing more. Right, yeah. definitely getting on the live stream thing, along with a lot of other local artists. Have more time to practice, for sure. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I've, I've seen an uptick in my own personal practice as well. I'm sorry, I cut you off, Felina. What's up? Oh, you're good. Colin changed his strings for the first time since joining the band. <laughs> <laughs> yes. What's the number one number one tip for new musicians? Change your strings. <laughs> Except for bassists. Never bassists. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, well, they are a bit more expensive. All right. Um, how long have you been in Nevada? I've been in Nevada since 92, so pretty much my whole life. Yeah, you're what, like 18, 19? Uh, no, 35. <laughs> you didn't have to tell us your actual age. Three. Sorry, so, what? Uh, my whole life. My family moved out here when I was three. Oh, wow. Sorry. I, I think I'm going on like 12 years, but I don't know how long I've been saying 12 years. So. Right on. Right. Once you've been here... 15 years. Yeah, right. <laughs> Once you've been here 10 years, you're a native, so. For sure. There you go. Yeah. Um, how long have you been doing music individually? I've been doing uh, music since uh, middle school, uh, playing in concert band and then playing bass since high school. Yeah, I started playing guitar when I was about eight-ish. Um, my brother brought home a uh, flyer for guitar lessons. Me being competitive, I was like, I'm gonna do that too, man. And, uh, he stopped playing and I didn't, so I won. So. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I started singing for people in like middle school, probably like sixth grade or something. I don't know, I don't really know when everything started. I played violin for like four years, uh, I was terrible at it, and then started singing songs to people and they kind of liked it. So, yeah, nice. Middle school. Uh, that actually leads into my next question. Uh, when was the first time you performed in front of people? Hmm. Ooh, uh, middle school also, because, yeah, concert band, we had to have recitals for our parents. So, uh, oh, yeah, I forgot about, like, parent recitals. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, man. So, um, yeah, I, I started gigging pretty young. So, um, yeah, my first, my first performance... Uh, I was like 14, I found a, uh, a blues band on Craigslist, believe it or not. Um, yeah, I could have gotten murdered, yeah. but um, didn't, so that worked out. But yeah, I, I found this blues band off Craigslist. Um, they were all like 50-year-olds, and my first, um, my first gig was at, at an Italian restaurant called Carmine's. Yeah. Carmine's Little Italy? Yeah. The one that was on yes, March. On. Yep. Oh wow! I had my first ever gig. Years old. I didn't even know they had live music there. I used to go there for breakfast all the time because it was like two ninety nine or three ninety nine for a full on breakfast. And you know who I uh, used to see there all the time was John Barr. Oh yeah. You know John Barr. He'll do anything to sell you a car. Car. Yeah. Yep, that guy. He used to, he would, he would always be in there um, eating breakfast. So it was, it was just one of those things. And later on, I actually, uh, back in the day when I sold furniture, I sold him furniture twice. And uh, he, every time he had a shirt on, he's not the tallest man. And he had a shirt on that said, I'm huge in Japan. <laughs> <laughs> um, 
The first time I performed for anyone was, I think it was either middle school or high school orchestra. It must have been, must have been middle school orchestra. And I was like five millionth chair violin. <laughs> the worst class. It's terrible. Terrible violin players are the worst. But at least you got to be in the orchestra. That's true. They were very kind. <laughs> awesome. Okay, um, moving on. What, or, or sorry, how long have you been Stanley Avenue? Odie's, uh, we started in September, September of 2018. Yeah, it's a little over a year. Yeah. We've been a unit probably for like six or seven months or so. Yeah, yeah we went through we, a lineup change or two. Yeah, it was a little while before we got Billy and Connor on. Yeah. Right on. So who started it? Was it was Felina and Colin or? Yeah, yeah. we're the only remaining uh, remaining original members. Uh, we had a, a different guitar player and then a rhythm guitar player. Also, we started with no percussion. Nice. Yeah, I um uh, was in a cover band. Perfect name, Revolving Door. <laughs> <laughs> We went through seven drummers and, and landed back on number two. <laughs> Four keyboardists and ended up with none. And uh, we were a seven piece and ended up as a four piece. <laughs> I started just singing uh, and ended up being the front man somehow. And um, I mean, like like playing guitar, rhythm guitar and singing. And we had um, bass players. God, it was every gig was a different bass player. Great, yeah. Yeah, and, and uh, I remember like me and the lead guitarist, sorry, the lead guitarist and I, uh, we're, we're the only original members, and eventually it was just like, this, it's just not fun anymore. Yeah, yeah. But that's... Really, I think we're really lucky for the lineup that we have now. We went through a little bit of a, a little bit of a trial period there, but we uh, had, it, had it pretty figured out. Yeah, you know, every band has to find their sound yeah. first. Yeah. Which leads me to an usual interview question. How would you define your band's musical sound? Huh. Um, multifaceted. Yeah. <laughs> <Whoa. laughs> yeah. The, the cool thing is we're all from different backgrounds, right? Mm -hmm. So since we've all come from different musical backgrounds, we're all bringing a different piece to the table, and it keeps us a little bit different. So even though we're doing cover songs, we're putting our own spin on everything, and I think our originals really display the weird mix of, uh, of diverse backgrounds we've got. Yeah, I'd say it's still evolving too because the band as a the current iteration of it hasn't been together long enough really to put together two. Well, we haven't put together an original song at it with the current lineup. Yeah. So it's um, still evolving, still solidifying. Right on. Okay, moving on. Let's talk about musical influences. Um, any order that you want to go in, what, uh, what was the earliest musical influence that got you thinking, I want to do that? Oh, uh, for rock music, that would probably have to be Rage Against the Machine for me. Huh. Definitely. Yeah. Funny story about um, that. I started my first... Hmm? Okay, there was a little bit of a lag. Sorry. Just funny story about Rage Against the Machine. I used to be roommates with a guy and, and coworkers who he went to high school with the singer for Rage Against the Machine. He said he was a total preppy, like collar up the whole bit. I was like, what happened? Yeah, that's it. I mean, it was a Catholic high school, too. Whoa, Catholic high school. Yep, St. Thomas Aquinas. I, I almost went there, actually, funnily enough. But anyway, moving on. Sorry, go ahead. <laughs> oh man so um my first like guitar hero that i was really into was like um stevie ray vaughn like i used to play those guitar hero, hero video games a lot when i was a kid <laughs> like i had already been playing guitar for a couple of years at that point but the first one came out and they had um it was either texas flood or pride and joy on it and it was just like, <laughs> you know to uh did myself yet, but um, uh, after a while, you know, I branched out to like the, the stereotypical guitar heroes, like um, 
Jimi Hendrix and Jeff Beck and you know all those other guys and later on got into jazz and funk. So nice. I, I'm around. I'm around. Mine was like unique female vocalist. Well, I guess unique female or male vocalist. So I was like really into Macy Gray was the first one that I was drawn to. She had that like and shadows ain't go by the the really popular one. Her voice was so bizarre for the time that she was popular in. So she was really my first one. And then uh, anybody that sounded unique after that, like uh, yeah, unique female vocalist always got my attention. Janis Joplin was one, but I really can't stand her music. I'm just <laughs> really not a big fan of her music. Well, having heard your stuff live, I definitely can recognize all those influences in what you do. Um, and it, you've managed to blend all a lot of disparate so sources into one cohesive unit. Um, I know Billy's, uh, you know, his musical uh, influences and experience is all over the map. All over the map. Yeah. So that's actually really, really good for you guys. And um, I think as your multifaceted sound grows and gels, then um, it, it, I look forward to hearing what you evolve into, like what you sound like next year, you know, on your original stuff. So cool moving on from that what is your favorite show memory as a band <laughs> oh man there's so many ridiculous things. um do tell uh, <laughs> man. yeah like when i first joined the band i was probably not even i don't even think you're in the band a month well let's say three days so i was in the band for like three days at this point um, and Felina's like, hey, we have a gig in Ely, Nevada, which is a four-hour drive north of here. I'm like, okay, cool. Let's, let's go. Let's, let's hit the road. Going on tour. Yeah. Woo! Um, so it's so the venue, and they're like, yeah, where you're going to be sleeping in the basement, which they go on to explain is a haunted basement because it was used for, like, it was, used, it was used for transporting money between the bars, so it's like there's boarded up tunnels and shit. It's an all. old mining town. Yeah. So they, they had these tunnels that would go to the, the train station that connected all of the bars, so they could just, just take stuff out of the railroad. Yeah, so um, so we get down there in the haunted basement, you know, and I'm a very skeptical person, so I was like, get the fuck out of here with this haunted basement nonsense, you know. Um, and then, so so we're sleeping. It's, it's after the gig. It's the middle of the night. I get up to go to the bathroom, not having been in there before. And the very first thing I see is uh, what I come to realize, a cardboard cutout of Captain Kirk uh, in the shower, like, <laughs> like behind the glass. And I, I think I almost woke the rest of the band up, you know, because I was just like, oh, you know. <laughs> Ely is fantastic. It's uh, it's it's up there. It's uh, among my favorite places. The people there are so welcoming, and the venues are really cool, and uh, they're very welcoming when you come to town. Interesting place, for sure. I love yeah. it. Other than that, I mean, the, the the invites to the sex party were pretty interesting. That, that, what? That yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh, we, we play uh pretty regularly at this really classy joint, and. Uh, one of the regulars there, I guess, was going to host a party uh, and wanted me to attend specifically. Did you, you guys didn't get invited? No, I didn't get invited. It, to it, was just, it, it was just me and one of the ladies in management at this place. And so he hands me this, and it's a it's, it's a sex party at his, his mansion, and it's like. Ladies only. There's like numbers of beds listed. It's very bizarre. And it was too many beds. It was nine beds, and it had six bedrooms. <laughs> That's too many. <laughs> it was just a very bizarre invitation, and it came with a tank top that said some inappropriate stuff on it. And I'm like looking at this guy like, hey, barely, do you like know who I? Am? You barely know who I am. He's keep giving this tank top. It's like tease me, squeeze me, really bizarre thing. And the coolest part of this invitation was that on the back of the invitation, uh, all of them actually, you folded them out, there were short stories on the backs of all of these, in, these uh, 
invitations. All different. They were all different. Uh, and mine, what, what was what was mine? Oh man, there. Well, we we got two different ones because you you got one. That's right. And um, Morgan, and got, Morgan one. got one. Oh. So it was, <laughs> the first one was about it was a, it was a retelling of the nativity, the birth of Jesus, set mm -hmm. in modern day Bethlehem, Pennsylvania. <laughs> and what the. Like an illegal immigrant, and Mary was 14, and there's a thing about the president called Joseph Pedophile Jose, and it was a whole whole thing. And then the other one was, wow. yeah, yeah, right. And then the other one was about uh, how a, you, the cat is not like your boyfriend or girlfriend, right. and will never stab you in the chest in the middle of the night. Yes, and these but were they, invitations. Yeah, the, have I have I been to this place? Yes, you have been to this place. I had a feeling that's the place you were talking about, and that's really surprising. And yet, at the same time, not what no. would me about it. <laughs> no, the thing that like is, has been sticking well, point. In wait, my wait, life. I need to know how was the party, Felina? I didn't go to the party. <laughs> <laughs> you made me go instead, and it was not what you would expect. Even if you're interested in going to this party after reading that. The, the short stories on the back, you're like, nah, man, I, I think I'm... Yeah, the, the, yeah. Second, the second you flip it over and anything religious is there, you're like, yeah, that, that, there it goes. That's the last of my libido. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, it was oh very strange. God. So those are probably your show situations. Uh, those are some yeah, good ones. The Ely, the Ely one, Billy had a bottle opener on his, uh, on his drum kit. Right, and because of the altitude change, anytime somebody would pop their their beer open, it would spray all over everything. Uh, <laughs> cheers! Cheers! Mm. Which so reminds me, th this uh, this interview is brought to you by Angry Orchard Crisp Hard Cider, Crisp Apple, Angry Orchard, smooth. <laughs> Sponsor me. Uh, do you That's still have the tank top? I do. St no, did I give it to somebody? No, I still have the tank top. So we have Billy wear it again. I think you should have Billy wear it at a game. I think you should have Billy wear it with like cheetah or leopard striped pants or something. Oh, and buddy ears, right? And buddy ears. <laughs> wow. Uh, I'm sorry, you were talking about Billy's uh, Billy's bottle opening kit. Yeah, it was really funny. Uh, he invited people up to, to pop their beers open and it just started going over all of everything. Oh no. Yeah. So you put on your own Bellagio fountain show? <laughs> yeah, bring in a little of Vegas. Nice. All right. Um, from your favorite show, Memory, let's talk um, favorite venue. Is there a favorite venue anywhere that you guys you know have that, that you really love? It doesn't even have to be one you've played at yet. Hmm. Bunkhouse has been very, very good to me. I love that place. Yep. I really like what they've done with it recently. I, I, I've been there with every single one of their iterations. And uh, did you ever go there when they had the listening tree? Yes, I loved the listening tree. I did too. I was bummed that it wasn't kept, but I wonder if there was some sort of electrocution fear. <laughs> <laughs> so the listening tree was like, it, it was like a willow tree, right? I think it was a willow yeah. tree. Okay. I, um, these wires hanging down, these headphones hanging down. It was outside had headphones hanging down and they were all playing something different, right? Different, completely different genres. Some yeah. of them like polka, some were rock, some were whale noises. And it was like just cool. really strange with Christmas lights. I love Yeah, those. it was really, really cool. You know, um, okay, you know where the truck is now, right? Yeah. There's like a fence and on the other side is a huge tree. Well, that fence wasn't there. And it was on the other side of that big, huge tree. And the, so the tree, it was just, I, there were, I think there were white headphones with white cords, yeah. and I remember going, that's really, really cool, but at the same time, if it rains, I don't want to be out here. Yeah. But yeah, I heard, I heard, <laughs> I, I heard like world music, world beat on one, and then the next one was something like punk, and the next one was country, and the next, I didn't hear the whale noises, though. I did hear the whale noises. But yeah, like, that was when they were really going for the artsy-fartsy thing. Yeah. Yeah, but I like what they've done now, and um, again, the, the sound, the, the sound people there are just amazing job. So, yeah. um, my okay. favorite venue that right now is Park MGM. 
I I am in love with Park MGM. Uh, that place is fun. Yeah, yeah. so the, there's a casino stage in the center of, of the casino. Uh, there's Park Theater, and then like out in the middle of the casino, there's a round stage. So people entering in all directions have to walk past your stage. And we play in that little circle. That's my favorite so far. Ooh, playing in the round. Yeah, yeah. it's very fun because there's people on all sides of you. And it's unusual to be that exposed. So which way do you face? We face toward the, the main part of the casino. Like there's Italy behind us. And then the main part of the casino where everybody's coming out of Park Theater, we face that way um, mainly. But we can engage with anybody. I really right. can't really get stuck, stuck there. Yeah. Looking but, it should yeah. rotate. It should just rotate. Yeah. Um, right. Now, do you have to bring? You don't have to bring your own sound for that, do you? No. No, they uh, they have it. But we did have our first experience with in ear monitors there, so that's a thing. I still want to try that. I, 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 it's just there's never been a gig where that wasn't like there's no point. Yeah. Literally, it's not worth the money to spend on these things. But um, yeah. we have to have them there. There's there's no monitors. There's nothing. It's <gasps> Yeah. Oh, so the coolness is law. They make up for the the coolness with the lack of decent sound for you guys. Yeah, but the, well, the no, monitors no, are great. Any monitors are good. So, oh, so yeah, like, that's true. Yeah, they can they can give you they give everybody their own mixes just in these these in ears. But the first time we played it, we did it with CVS headphones because we didn't have in ears. <laughs> that was the worst. <laughs> so yeah. definitely invest in good in ear monitors if you're gonna play a place like that. Garbage in, garbage out. Yeah, exactly. Awesome. How about you, Colin? Favorite venue? Oh, man, I don't know. It's hard to beat Park MGM, to be honest with you. Just the, the kind of crap response we get there is, is just it, the stuff. Um, I don't know. Yeah, barbershop's pretty good. I, I got a soft spot for Container Park. Oh, too. yeah. I like yeah. Container Park a lot. Yeah. I mean, Container Park is pretty freaking cool. Yeah, but, and their stage is great. Uh, Gold, Gold Spike is a lot of fun as well. Yeah. There's so many good stages in town that it's hard to be like, uh -huh. this is the best. You know? <laughs> it's the best. Right on. Um, I do. I mean, one thing I like about Gold Spike is where else is your green room going to be in Airstream? Great. Right. Yeah. yeah. That's um, I've sold Girl Scout cookies to Billy in that Airstream. <laughs> 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 I'm a dad. Anyway, <laughs> these are my yeah, kids. Even the smaller venues have their own cool aspects, you know, stuff like uh, hard weight and starboard tack and yeah. stuff like that. And the oh, Barrymore starboard tack. Unbeatable yeah. lounge, you know, you can't beat the, the Barrymore's, uh, you know, intimacy there. It's really great. Yeah, yeah. they're yeah. so We've been I, there for over. What was that? We've been there for over a year now. Wow. Yeah. Keep it up. Um, I do have a soft spot in my heart for the small, like Evil Pie or Starboard Tech, where you literally, you, you're like, I sweat it on by the band, you know, yeah. and, and I'm, you know, you, literally you can feel them singing the words back at you. I have a soft spot in my heart for that. But at the same time, I would love to play in the round. I didn't know that um, Park MGM had, had that. I haven't been yeah. in there in forever. So cool. Moving on. You guys doing okay? Yeah. Yeah. yeah how are you okay. doing? I'm on freaking leaveable. How are you doing? So uh, <laughs> the double eyebrow smooth. Yeah. Karin, Karin, you need to go to the bathroom. You good? No, I'm good, man. I was joking. <laughs> All right, cool, cool. Um, so is there um, – no, never mind. Not going to ask that. Okay. Instead, let's talk gear. I know that our, your resident gear whore is not there because drummers are the gear whores. But that's okay. I'll insert uh, Billy's answer from the So Stoked interview here. Bing. Wow. All right. Um, so who's next? Uh, let's talk gear. What are you currently rocking when you do a show or live stream? Uh, that... I'm, I'm currently rocking a Jaguar bass. Um, it's a deluxe, like about 10 years old now. But it's definitely my favorite. And then I play straight into uh, Ampeg SVT4 Pro and uh, an SWR Triad Cap. Nice. Pretty straightforward, right? And the red right. makes you play faster, right? Yeah. <laughs> it lets me set up and break down faster. <laughs> yeah, right. Sorry, Felina, you were going to say? Oh, I was just saying I have to dodge this thing on a really regular basis. Yeah, it's, it's, good thing, 
interviews and shows, rehearsals. Shows, rehearsals. Sometimes I just walk down the hallway with the face at man. Honestly, <laughs> you should work that into the act somehow, where at a certain <laughs> point, you just duck and he, he does a spin. <laughs> that would be or, yeah. or better yet, bo both you take turns spinning around, <laughs> trying to whack her. Um, cool. <laughs> Uh, Colin, any particular strings? You know, you just change your strings. Uh, what, do you have a particular affinity uh, for a certain yeah. brand or anything? Uh, yeah, I always go with Diodario on my bass and my guitars. Cool. Picks? Whatever you find yeah. on the floor? Yeah, basically, I normally play with my fingers. So, so yeah, what, whatever he has, I'll just take one from his pocket. <laughs> <laughs> That's what guitarists are for. Nice. Um, and you don't use any pedals? Please picks on his guitar anyway. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, Colin, you don't use any pedals or, or did you say you use pedals? Uh, not at the moment. Um, uh, the, I was using an Octaver pedal, but I'm working on upgrading to something different. All right. Next. I guess I'll go. Okay. <laughs> All right. Um, so it kind of depends on the gig for me um, when I'm using I'm doing acoustic stuff. I use this this bad boy, it's a Breedlove uh, Concertina, made out of mahogany. It's got electronics in it, which are cool. Um, uh, when I'm playing with this, I usually just run straight into PA. Um, that's easiest with an acoustic. Um, when I'm doing electric gigs, I use my uh, 2015 Deluxe Fender Stratocaster. Um, I threw a Seymour Duncan Antiquity in the bridge, uh, humbucker, sounds like a PAF, um, pretty cool. Um, both guitars I use uh, Diodario 11s on. Um, uh, as far as picks, anything that's like one and a half millimeters and above uh, is cool. I'm not picky when it comes to picks. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah, one and a half millimeter, that's a bass guitar pick. So <laughs> I just let him buy my picks for me, basically. Yeah, lucky you. Um, nice. uh, right now, um, for the most part, we've been doing gigs lately that don't require me to have an amp, where they, they outright say, don't bring an amp. You know, so I've been running a lot of the time through a Headrush gig board, which is interesting, because it's got all the, um, the, the cab models and the amp models are good to go. So it's got my effects, I've got my amp and cab, I just throw it in my big bag. Which is really nice because um, when I'm not doing gigs that require that, I'll be running uh, through a um, Music Man RD50. So it's a 112 uh, 80s. Uh, sounds like a Fender blackface tone if you're a guitar gearhead like I am. Um, and then pedals, when I'm not using a head rush, uh, I have. Uh, a JHS double barrel on my board. I have a Dunlop 535Q Crybaby, a Boss DD5 Delay, um, a Throne Room Pedals, uh, Tremolo. Oh yeah, J Rocket. Uh, what, are, what is it? The uh, the IQ, which is it's like a Dynacomp with an EQ in front of it, which is really fun. Um, and then I run that all through a Boss ES5 pedal switcher to make my life easier. Nice. Uh, before we move on to Felina, real quick question. Um, how many picks do you have currently sitting inside that acoustic guitar? No, I'm not. Yeah. <laughs> you're, not you're not playing hard enough. <laughs> <laughs> I, usually, I usually pick back here so they don't tend to nice. fall um, on, on the uh, the gig pedal, do you have – do you? Have you got it set up pretty much for the set list you do, or do you have to sit there and do a little t tap dancing every song? Um, well, for the most part, my effects uh, list is pretty standard. So I have, I have two different rigs on it right now that I, I go back and forth between. And one is uh, kind of the standard, like, clean to, like, rock tones, and then I have one that's heavier than that for the couple songs that are, like, heavier in the set. But for the most part, I, I, I run one board on it. I haven't had it long enough to really get into the fancy, like, this is the, the board for this tune, this is the board for this tune, and I switch back and forth. Right on. I haven't gotten that far into it yet. Hmm. All right. On to you, Miss Cartar. 
So, uh, I use this ukulele. It's a Lohanu. I don't know anything about ukuleles at all. I'm not even really that comfortable changing my own strings yet. Mm. Uh, Ohana means family. <laughs> um, yeah, I don't know. And then microphones, we're using a sure something. <laughs> Uh, oh, <laughs> sure, something, something. It's a wireless. It's cool. Um, I, the SM58 wireless? Oh, that's what that is. Yeah. Something like that. See, like they're, they're not helping me at all. <laughs> like, no help. Like, I'm dying. Yeah, sure we're not. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, so I don't know a whole lot about equipment. Um, I haven't found a microphone that I've fallen in love with yet. Uh, the closest one was that one that we used at one time, but I don't know anything about it. <laughs> Any awesome. of it. This was a gift. The last one was a gift. Um, yeah, that's what I use. Cool. Good old vocal cords. Right. Ain't about the, it's about the player, right? Yeah. Yeah. It's a poor workman that blames his tools. <laughs> Although, if your tool is a piece of crap, well, <laughs> you're going to have fun. <laughs> Okay, um, and obviously Billy plays a Tama drum set, according to the uh, kick drum, but... Uh, oh, those are mine. Uh, the, yeah. Of he course really, they are. I don't know, he's got like yeah, three sets, right? Yeah, he customizes all of this, so you can't tell what brand they use. I, I do know he does have a Yamaha, I believe it's a stage custom. And I know that he's got at least one custom snare made by his dad. Yeah. His, those snares are amazing. Yeah. yeah. Um, cool. From uh, what you're currently rocking, is there any dream gear, any Wayne's World soon you'll be mine moments? Uh, I mean, I'd like to get a five string bass at some point and maybe a handful of effects. Uh, definitely a, ni a nicer octave. Um, and yeah, maybe some fuzz, some envelope filter, some cool funky stuff like that. Get your Getty Lee on. <laughs> Yes, attempt to. <laughs> <laughs> right on. Uh, I like this ukulele a lot, so I'm very happy with this. Uh, I'd maybe like to eventually get like a mini guitar that is strung like a ukulele. We have one, we could just probably, I don't know. I think maybe the sound of a guitar would be a cool addition on top of the guitar. Um, but my, my main thing is I'd like to find a microphone that I'm in love with. And I just haven't done that yet. Oh, don't worry. Someday you'll 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 be a big singer. <laughs> yeah, you know, one day. <laughs> Mr. Uh, Connor. Um, I've got pretty much all the guitar gear that I want. It it covers all my bases. So the only thing that I really want now um, is a laptop with a DAW, so with I can you know. Digital audio workstation. Oh, I thought you said dog. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm like, why do you, you a laptop with a dog? Okay. A dog for the background. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe a laptop or something. Yeah. Nice. All right. Uh, from the highs of dream gear, let's talk about the lows of losing gear. You ever lose gear? Uh, not on accident. Um, Definitely <laughs> <laughs> before. <laughs> Yeah, I think the only thing I've lost, I left a component of gig once. Um, I do tend to forget gear if it's like I get overloaded with too much stuff. Like I was in a band one time where they were like, hey man, we need you to bring the drums and your guitar rig. And I was like, ah, oh, shit. Um, so I forgot the two most important things, which are the hi-hat clutch and the snare stand. Yeah. <laughs> and the gig was about 40 minutes away from my <laughs> <laughs> And when did you I, remember that? Yeah, I did. Yeah, I, I remember that, man. Uh, I had a ukulele stolen. Oh. Yeah, it was a really nice one. So it's back up like this one. Yeah, my last ukulele got stolen out of a car. Suck. Yeah. People suck sometimes. People suck. <sighs> well, at least you didn't put it down on the ground next to a van in the parking lot at Hooters Casino and then drive home and realize, I just did that, didn't I? And oh, it's gone. Uh, yeah. 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 But we're moving on. We're picking it back up. All right. So we've talked about gear. 
And we've talked about shows. I was wondering, do you have a, any sort of pre-show ritual that you like to go through to get yourself ready to hit the stage? Six shots of whiskey and five cigarettes. <laughs> well, not six cigarettes. Oh, not, five. not six, only five. Mm. Don't knock shots to whiskey. That's a recipe for disaster. I like to sit in the corner of the green shots room and sob. <laughs> 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 I would think this. It was more entertaining after the fifth shot of whiskey. <laughs> I don't know. I usually just check some XLR cables. Yeah. <laughs> nice. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I mean, we all warm up, you know. Yeah. Fancy. Yeah. Does Billy still eat his dinner on his his uh, kick drum <laughs> or his, his kettle drum? I mean. Uh, yeah, I don't think that one yet. Yeah. I have a I have a picture. We did a battle of the bands at Hooters Casino on that night, and we lost. But uh, there was a sign that said no food or drink and he sat his kettle drum right underneath it and he ate his dinner on his kettle drum right underneath the sign. And so I was just like, click! Because <laughs> that's Billy. Yeah. Yeah. Right on. All right, so we're on to our last question. You made it. Yay! Hey. Right. Let's pretend we're talking to a new musician. Okay? A little you all starry-eyed about what it means to be a musician in Las Vegas. <laughs> yes, little Connor. <laughs> with, with, <laughs> with hardly any pins on his jacket at the time. <laughs> <laughs> so let, what is one thing you wish somebody had told you about being a musician in Las Vegas? Uh, and, and don't say change your strings. Oh, man. Play with a metronome and learn as many tunes as possible. It's like a lot of a lot of young, um, well, young guitarists because th that's you know I, I teach guitar for a living, so that's what I really teach. But a lot of young musicians in general um, get to a point where they get some skill, and then they go, "Yeah, I don't need to learn anybody else's tunes. I'll just start making my own up." You know, but it's you know, if you're not pulling ideas from people who came before you. It's like, everything's already been done. Every chord progression's been done, you know. So you gotta kind of pull from the people who came before you and learn that, you know. It's like, music's like a language, right? And when you're a kid, they don't hand you a dictionary and say, here's English. You learn by mimicking your parents and the people around you. It's the same concept. So if you're not learning enough music, go, learn some more music, you know, and you'll get better. Right on. Um, I'd say, you know, play as many different genres and techniques as you can, you know, um, uh, just try to be as diverse as possible. Uh, that's a really good one. Uh, I actually took that advice from Colin a little while back. I tend to get really stuck in the same genre and the same box. Uh, so learn as many songs as possible and things you wouldn't usually listen to. So. Uh, also, bookers are mean, and don't let them be mean to you. Yeah, yes. booking, booking agents and promoters can sometimes make you really question what you're doing. Yeah, yeah. so you don't, you don't have to – I think I needed that, that advice a few years ago when I first started uh, having conversations with, with bookers and, and things like that. They're not bad, but – uh, you know, sometimes you just have to watch out for yourself a little extra because intention in different places. Right. I think. I'm sorry, I, I cut you off. What was that? That's okay. They, their intentions aren't always good. Yeah. Um, I think, and, and part of it is, of course, uh, to be fair, to be fair, uh, not, they're, they're also used to dealing with musicians that are not always reliable. Okay. Mm -hmm. So. Sometimes they they get that way, and and I've had that happen. I've had a booker been like, okay, look, we'll play. Here's a contract submitted by me. He says I'll sign it if every member of the band goes and promotes the show on social media. I'm like, we were going to anyway. It's like okay, yeah. uh, cool. Well. Thank you very, very much for your time and for, you know, 
making this happen, finally. <laughs> and uh, thank you very much, Room Sixers, for tuning in. Uh, stick around. We're going to see them in front of their window <laughs> instead of my guitar wall. Uh, and we'll, uh, we'll see how this goes. But in the meantime, um, I guess, thanks for watching. So say temporarily goodbye. Bye. Bye. Bye.
I want to thank Stanley Avenue for remoting by, and uh, it was a great interview and a great performance. I hope that you and yours are safe, and uh, do it again. Outro. Three, two, one. I want to thank Stanley Avenue for remoting by. It was a great interview and a great performance. If you'd like to check out more from them, definitely click one of the links down below for them. If you want to support this channel, definitely click one of the links below in the description for me. In the meantime, really appreciate you coming by. I hope that you and yours are safe and that you're following the COVID-19 uh, directives. Um, in the meantime, if you want to check out any more videos like this, click here. If you want to subscribe, click down there. Really appreciate you coming by. Remember to be amazing and stay safe. And we'll see you next time on Room 6.